Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and I would like to call to order uh, this meeting of the uh, Park and Recreation Commission. Uh, would everyone please stand and mute your microphones for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, um, Giovanna, would you do the uh, roll call, please? I would be happy to, Chair Messi. Commissioner Fields? Present. Commissioner Holm? Present. Commissioner Molnick? Here. Vice Chair Held? Here. Chair Massey? Here. Thank you. Okay. Um, before we move on to the next item, the, um, there's some explanation about the uh, Zoom meeting process that uh, I need to uh, get into the record. Uh, due to the physical distancing protocols in place at this time, we continue to encourage public participation remotely. Information on how to provide public comment is explained at the top and bottom of the published agenda. There are two ways to participate. Join the Zoom meeting by clicking on the link at the top of the agenda. Use the raise your hand button to be called on at the appropriate time. Please unmute yourself only when called upon. Or phone in participation can be done by calling 408-638-0963. With the conference ID 8685409-6885 and passcode 124522. <clears throat> Press star nine to raise your hand to be called on and star six to unmute. These options uh, for public comment will be available. Um, <clears throat> until we have uh, uh, completed public comment. Okay. Um, with that, um, <clears throat> my, I guess that's the other. We'll move to the consent calendar. Um, uh, on the consent calendar tonight is uh, approval of special and regular meeting minutes for November 3rd. Um, I'm looking for a motion or, uh, and a second to approve the November minutes unless someone has changes to propose. I move we, appro we approve. I second. Okay, Giovanna, could you do a roll call vote, please? I would be happy to chair Massey. And just one minor change um, that we will have to make is the numbering on the regular minutes. You are so uh, I left it out, thank you. <laughs> no worries. So with that, we'll start the roll call vote. Commissioner Holm? Aye. Commissioner Held? Aye. Commissioner Fields? Aye. Commissioner Wolnick? Aye. Chair Massey? Aye. Thank you, motion has passed. Okay. <clears throat> um, at this time, we offer to members of the public <clears throat> the opportunity to comment on any item not appearing on tonight's agenda. Um, sorry, hey, Chris, sorry, let me interrupt. Do we need to approve the special meeting minutes as well? Special meet. I am told that the what, what we've just done is to approve both the special okay. regular meeting minutes in one motion, and I'm told that that is the appropriate procedure. Perfect. <clears throat> okay. Uh, well, so uh, public comment. Uh, members of the public wishing to comment on any item not appearing on tonight's agenda may address the commission at this time. Uh, the uh, 
item on tonight's agenda is uh, <clears throat> parks, open spaces, and facilitating facility rather naming policy first draft. State law prevents the commission from taking action on any matter not on the. Your comments may be referred to staff for follow up. Public comment is limited to a total of 15 minutes. However, an opportunity for additional public comment may be provided later in the agenda. Uh, do we have uh, anyone uh, wishing to provide public comment on items not on the agenda at this time? Chair Massey, we do have one attendee, but they do not have their hand raised. Um, okay, well then I will close the uh, public comment at this point and uh, we can move on to uh, the next item on the agenda, which is parks, open spaces, and facility naming policy first draft. Um, now I understand that staff, um, other than providing us with a, a cop an on-screen copy of the uh, proposed draft uh, for help us with our discussion, uh, does not otherwise have a presentation tonight. So I'd like to move at this point directly to commission questions about the about this uh, proposal. Um, I'd like to keep it to questions only at this point. Um, and then after the public hearing, we'll come back and, and uh, have a, the opportunity for commission comments and discussion about the various portions of the draft. So do we have any questions at this point? I'll just throw it open. Anybody, any questions, anybody? I have one. Uh, and again, I apologize for missing last time around when this was discussed, but I'm just out of curiosity, we say that our preference is that in considering naming that the person should be de deceased. Is there a reason why we kind of landed on that? So um, thank you, um, Chair Massey and members of the commission. Um, this was my our first attempt to try and um, at least um, take the input that we heard last month um, and try to put it into a first draft. Um, the reason that we compromised on that is that there was not commission consensus on whether the person um, should either be um, deceased before, um, before um, a facility is named after them. So in looking through some other city um, policies, this seemed like the closest landing point, which is um, it's, pre it's preferred, but it's not required. Thank you. Anybody else, questions? Um, hearing none, um, <clears throat> then I think we should move on to the, the, uh, the public hearing. Uh, on this, and we'll we'll open this up now to uh, any co any uh, comments from the public um, on tonight's agenda item. Uh, do we have any uh, any requests for public comment? We do not at this time, Chair Massey. Okay. Well, then I will um, I'll close the public hearing on this then and bring it back to the commission. Um, uh, and in discussion with um, uh, Sheila, uh, we we thought that the best way to uh, to approach this is to take this uh, section by section and uh, just op open it up to. Uh, comments by or, or or discussion items by the commissioners on each section uh, separately, rather than trying to have each of us comment on the entire document at what in one shot. So, um, if we could start with section one, um, Commissioner Held, why don't you start on that if you can? Yep. Let me just pull up track it to my notes. Um, so I'm sorry, before I just start, I just, um, I had indicated to Chair Massey that I can pull the document up on a shared screen. 
if you think that would be helpful for everybody to follow along um, all at the same time. So I can do it either way. If you want to comment simply on your notes, that's fine. If you think it's helpful to have it up on the screen, um, I'm happy to do that as well. How does everybody feel? I thought perhaps it would be helpful to have it up on the screen, but it's certainly not a requirement. I mean, the one disadvantage is that you all can't see each other <laughs> when you have the, the, I, shared doc, the shared document up on the screen. Well, let me, let me reverse that then, unless somebody sees a, a reason to put it up on the screen, let's not. I, I actually think we should put it on the screen, considering this is recorded and posted as a public document, having it on the screen, if anyone's watching, I mean, not that we have an abundance of people watching, but um, if they are, that'll be helpful in the future. Um, okay, that's fine. Any other thoughts on this? Um, then let's then let's put it up. We just have to um, not see our smiling faces for a little bit. Okay. Okay. So I think everybody can see it um, on the screen. Um, just one other um, comment. I think I indicated this in the staff report. This has not been reviewed by our attorney's office, city attorney's office. And so um, I'm really trying to just get from all of you whether we're headed in the right direction. I don't wanna consider this a final document. Um, there's, I, I know that there's some missing pieces already, particularly maybe around definitions and things like that. This may not be the final formatting of it um, as well. So I just wanted to try and see whether or not the concepts are trying to be um, you know, responsive to what we heard uh, last month. Okay, uh, so section one. Great, so I have no comments from me on this. I think this makes absolute sense. Okay, um, Commissioner Holm? No comment. Uh, Commissioner Fields? Yeah, I think this is the right um, introduction and first section. I have no, no comments or changes. Okay, all right. Well, Commissioner Wolnick? Same, no comments on this section. Uh, and I, I don't have any either. I think this is, uh, is, is well drafted and, and appropriate, <clears throat> lays out the, the process pretty clearly. Um, definitions, um, I'd, be, I'd be particularly interested in uh, people's thoughts on uh, def additional definitions that should be in here, as well as, of course, comments on, on the two terms that are defined. Um, so let's take this the other way around. Commissioner Walnick. Um, so I, I've dealt with definitions a lot as an attorney, and I um, am strongly opposed to having them unless you absolutely need them. I think it really just complicates the whole document. So. I, my preference would be to only pull definitions that are, you know, for things that are really complicated and can't be explained within the text of the document itself. With that being said, I don't think there's really any missing here. I think everything else can be defined as it, as it is in the section that it appears. Okay. All right. Uh, so are you, are you saying then that the the two definitions that are here should be should be stricken. No, I think these are good. Um, I think these are necessary um, for the document itself. I just I would caution against, you know, I've seen documents where the definition list is longer than the actual document itself. So I think I'm just cautioning to be careful. Um, more definitions isn't better, in my opinion. So I think this is good as it is. Okay, <clears throat> all right, uh, Commissioner Fields. Yeah, I, I generally agree with Commissioner Wolnick. The only thing I would flag, and this is probably a question for our legal staff, is um, there could be sort of future developments where there's either city owned or privately owned facilities that are open to the public and would that count? And I don't know is the answer. Um, 
but I just, I don't want city owned to be too narrow. If, you know, a developer says this is, this is space for the public, does that, is that a park that we have jurisdiction over? I just, that's my only thing to flag. And I'm sure that's a question that can be answered. Um, but that just, it scratches on the, the question of do definitions then end up narrowing in ways that they aren't meant to is my only issue. So like if there's privately owned space that's for public use that we have which is a future question. Anyway, I think as it is, it's fine. It just needs, it needs a little bit more, I don't know, fine tooth combing. I got my booster earlier today. I just want to tell all of you. So I'm feeling a little bit, um, not as articulate perhaps as my, as my previous meetings, but I just, I wanted to flag that. That was something that when I did a read through of this, um, I, I just, I had to imagine could be an issue in the future. Okay, uh, Commissioner Hall. I agree with Commissioner Wallace Thomas. Okay, uh, Commissioner Field. No, wait a minute, I'm sorry. No, Commissioner Health, I'm sorry. No more comments from me. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll then get more into this when we talk about the um, the policy piece, but I, I respect Commissioner Wolnick's view about limiting the the number of defined terms in in the in this document, especially since it's meant to be a policy um, aimed at at sort of laying out. Uh, goals and 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 principles to be followed in in determining what uh, what facilities to to name and how they should be named, uh, as opposed to something like a contract, um, where indeed you can have pages and pages of defined terms. But I'm I'm seeing going through the the um, policy piece of this that in a variety of ways, we are trying to uh, put our arms around the distinction between um, a sort of ordinary level of significance, uh, of uh, contribution, of um, uh, service, of uh, financial donation that might uh, makes a, a, a particular individual uh, worthy of having a facility named after them. And the truly significant, truly extraordinary, um, truly important level of all these things uh, that makes that make would make the city want to name a facility after that individual. Uh, and I'm not sure that we really have hit the mark in this draft. We, we've tried different words. We've got substantial, we've got significant, we've got exceptional, we've got uh, extraordinary. Um, and it just seems as though we're, we're, we're not hitting the target. Um, and I think that I'm not sure what word we should, or words we should use. But I think that concept has got to be in here as a definition. I think we, we need to understand what is meant by the level of contribution, whether it be in terms of service or money or land, uh, that is going to put someone on the short list to have a facility named after them. And I, th and I think, I, I'm, I'm not sure how to write that, but I, I think that needs to be in there in some way, shape or form as a definition. Otherwise, I think the definitions we've got are fine. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with either one or uh, either the definition of parks or public facilities and amenities, but I think this other concept needs to be in there somewhere. Anything additional on this before we 
move on? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I see where you're going with that. Um, but I, I thought kind of the purpose of this policy was sort of to help um, when, I mean, to put it negatively, I think it's really to protect the city when they don't want to name something after someone. And so I guess I'm a little worried about getting too specific of a definition of what a substantial contribution is. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to go through the exercise and see if, if someone can come up with something we can work with. But to me, if this is going to go through the department, us, and the city council. And that seems like a lot of people to discuss whether something is substantial or not. So I guess I'm a little hesitant. Um, again, I'm willing to go through the exercise of, if we have something to maybe try to define that, but I think it's so vague in itself that it seems pretty hard to put in a policy. So that, that's my feeling on that. Um, okay. Uh, no, I, I, I understand what you're, what you're saying in that and uh, I agree it's going to it's going to be hard but well and when we get into that with the next section there maybe we can we can talk further about this anything else as far as the definitions are concerned okay here hearing nothing let's let's move on to us uh, to section three and commissioner wallach let's start let's start with you Okay, so we're gonna, do we wanna do section three ABC all together, ABC? Uh, perhaps not, maybe we are, well, there's only A and B, I think. Oh, A and B, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah let's do them separately, that's fine. But it, it doesn't matter, I don't have that many comments, but um, okay, so in uh, A2, where we talk about naming parks after the individuals or organizations, yeah. I would vote to remove or funding. Um, so when it says such a significant donation of land or funding, I think that option is always there if someone donates a large amount of money. But in my mind, we we want to be encouraging the land donation. So I, I would pose that as a, a topic for discussion on whether we want to highlight funding there as well, or just sort of leave it up to um, the city council if they, you know, if there is a significant donation that comes in, does it need to be called out in this policy when they have the discretion anyway? Okay. Um, Commissioner Hell. Yeah, same, just on point two for this. I, you know, I wonder, if it's going to be hard to double down a bit in terms of like a definition, is there maybe a second step? And I know this conversation about the policy, but is there a second step where we kind of come up with a template for applications that maybe ask some questions that would give more kind of visibility into why the recommendation is being made and how that would support the person being worthy of this? Um, but I feel like there are lots of great checks and balances, but maybe there's some sort of standardized way we can collect some of that information if we don't do a definition. Um, but I do feel like there's a chance to do a bit more, but I, I agree with Commissioner uh, Wolnick that it's a little bit you know, squishy and I, I think it's gonna be tough to come up with a definition. Um, and I'm glad to see that we are discouraging renaming of parks where there is common community usage. And I wonder if we should even be stronger in the language on, on that. Um, and I think that was, that was it for me. Okay, Commissioner Fields. Yeah, I, I think that um, I agree with my previous two commissioners. I think this generally encapsulates what we discussed in the last meeting. Um, I know it's not specific, but I think, you know, the reality is, um, you know, these things will be evaluated um, as they come up. I agree that removing um, funding makes sense. Obviously, it's, you know, in planning commission, there's things that can be negotiated around funding if it's attached to a development. Um, if there's an individual or an organization that wants to donate, um, that can be worked out. But I don't think it's necessarily something we want to to advertise within the policy. Um, I agree that that it should be land, and I also agree 
we should be strongly discouraging renaming of parks. Um, there would need to be a very compelling reason to rename. That's what I got. Okay, Commissioner Hall. Uh, I also agree with the removal of the OR funding line. Um, and then also under section B, uh, the last statement under the first item was, because we're doing A and B, right? Um, we could, I don't know how, did everybody else, was everybody else just focused on A and they've got more comments on B? I have more on B. Yeah, I, I think we're just gonna do A for right now. Okay, then I'll, I'll wait on B. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay, so nothing, nothing further on A? Nope. Okay, well, I, I'm in agreement with, with all of you. The, the only situation that I can imagine, and I don't know, uh, Director Kenzie, and whether we have ever had this happen, is the situation where someone comes along and says, I will provide the funds to purchase land to be dedicated as a public park. And if that was the case, that the person wanted the park to be named after them, I think that that would be a pretty compelling case. Um, has that ever happened? You know, um, not that I'm, I can't think of an instance where it has. Um, I mean, there was a, I think the, the issue I think has really been around land. And, and frankly, we've had very few of those. Um, I mean, I can only think of really one, which is Trina Park, um, where the land was do donated. Um, and so I, I cannot think of an instance where there has been a significant amount of money given, in fact, where we went out and purchased uh, property. Okay, I mean, it, it does happen. You, you read about this in other, certain, in other contexts and in other situations where that's happened. So I guess it's possible. But you know, if, if the way it, that we've written it, this is this is these are really examples that are being put out. It's not we're not saying it, that it only this or what have you. Um, so I'm I'm happy with taking out the ore funding and and focusing on land. I also wanted just to note <clears throat> um, that this is I think the first place that we have come across. Uh, an individual being deceased or living, and we are limit. We appear to be limiting uh, renaming of a park uh, to recognition of a deceased individual. And uh, um, I don't know how if anybody has strong feelings about that, but I just wanted to point out that that's there. Any thoughts? Anybody? Yeah, I, I mean. Oh, go ahead. I thought that was in the section for facilities, not parks. Oh, well, I'm just noting if you look at two, uh, A2, two. It says in recognition of a deceased individual who contributed extraordinary service to the city of San Mateo. Oh, you're right. I, I missed that. Well, that, I had two the first couple of times I went through this, and uh, I just wanted to point out that it's there. Um, that's all. And I'm still stuck on this a little bit. And again, maybe you guys covered this and I shouldn't reopen this after last time, but it just seems weird that we're focused very much on this person being deceased. I, I can understand maybe further down saying that might be a preference and give some rationale as to why, but I feel like we're very much limiting this from the get-go by carrying the deceased piece throughout. Well, I guess my question would be, should we change, should the language be changed to say something along the lines of in recognition of an individual who contributed extraordinary service instead of limiting it to a deceased individual? Be my preference. Anybody so else? I can speak to that. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, Commissioner Held, um, at the previous meeting, and I, I still feel this way a month later, um, I do have a preference for naming things after, in memorial. Uh, as a tribute to someone who is deceased, um, frankly, because you can know the full extent of what that person has or hasn't done. Um, I, obviously, the lens of history can change over time. Um, 
but uh, you know, we, we have some examples even across our region of schools, for example, being named after living people and then there being controversy and wanting to rename them while that person is still alive. Um, and that can be just a really sticky and controversial issue. Um, and so I, I will say personally, I, I do think there, it makes sense to have at least a preference for naming things after someone who is deceased. It's clear what their legacy is. Um, but, and I said this in the previous meeting and I'll say it again, um, I'm, I'm happy to be outvoted on this. Certainly there are extraordinary individuals uh, in San Mateo who probably are worthy of this, um, who you know are alive and we can honor them while they're living. Um, but I, I will say I do have a preference for, for naming things after, after deceased people. I hope that's helpful. Absolutely. Um, any, any other thoughts on this before we move on to B? Um, I, I have a, so my, um, my priority here is that it's more about land and that we're, I think this is a written and I think we all agree that it, we really don't want these parks to be renamed a lot. I mean, really we want them to be geographic or significant natural, cultural, you know, the features. Um, and so I don't have a problem with the deceased part here because it, I, I don't, I don't feel strongly about it in, in total, but this one seems like we really do want to be limiting what we're doing with the park itself. And so to me, I don't have as, I mean, I guess I'm on the fence anyway, but I would fall towards being more restrictive on naming parks than I would on facilities. So that's my thoughts on that. And I, I would actually fall the other way. I, um, so I would echo Commissioner Matthews or Chair Matthews comments uh, that maybe we just, um, don't actually say deceased because you could in this area have an individual that wants to donate money to buy, to buy, you know, donate land or donate money to buy a park. And I don't think we want to say, sorry, you're still alive. We won't take it. So, um, so I, I, I don't have a problem with it. And I, and, you know, to Commissioner Phil's comments or concerns about you find out later in life that they're, um, maybe not someone you want to honor in the same fashion. Well, that's why we have a policy within here to allow you to change. And, you know, if it's the, the Harvey Weinstein park, um, then you have no problem changing it when, when that comes forth. And, um, you know, and, and, and yeah, you have those hard discussions when that happens, but, but that's just part of life. So, so actually I, I agree and appreciate um, Chair Massey pointing out that these thing, and I would actually say, to just say to not not require be deceased, just you know um, that we that we are supporting the the donation of land if if that were to were to happen. Um, thank you for that. Picking up on Commissioner Waldick's point, um, another thought is to take that entire provision out, and I mean, and it's really a question of under what circumstances do we want to name a park after an individual? But um, we could say that the only way that we'll name a park after an individual is if they make a significant donation of land and basically donate the land for that park. And the, de the donation could be direct or indirect in the sense that either the the person owns the land and donates it or provides money to purchase the land. Uh, looking at that as, as an indirect donation of land and that maybe those that's the only circumstance under which we will name a park after a person. And I think uh, uh, Director Kenzie, and it, what you, you're saying to us is the only park that we've got that where there was a donation of land, I think that park was named after the family, wasn't it? Correct. Yeah. yeah I, I think to the, just to the point of, you know, of individual names, I mean, we, we already have two examples existing um, where we have parks that are named after individuals, Martin Luther King Park um, and the Bayside Joinville Park, the Joinville Park being 
Gordon Joinville, um, who was an officer slain here in San Mateo a good number of years ago. So um, what I was trying to do was maybe over justifying the names that are already out there rather than trying to be more um, thinking forward in terms of that. So um, it, as I said, this really is for, for the commission and ultimately for the council um, to make a, a decision around these policy kinds of issues. Um, you know, I think that what might be helpful in terms of giving direction to staff, and this is the same kind of process that the council uses, and that is in order for a suggestion to move forward, we really need consensus from at least three of you to be able to do that. If I chase, if we chase every single comment, we would never um, get to a policy. So whatever you all bring up, it would be helpful to try to get to consensus on whether or not you agree with that change or not. Because if, if we're not seeing at least three people kind of in support of that, then it doesn't really help give the direction to staff that we need. Okay, well, line about well, before I propose anything, uh, Commissioner Hall. Yeah, I, you know, I'm reading it over again. And I'm remembering when I was reading this earlier in the week, prep for the meeting. Um, and actually, I, I don't have, I, I'm changed my comment. I don't have a problem with the way it's written. Um, and the reason being is that it's actually, it's an either or. It's a, it's a, so it says naming parks that individuals or organizations may be considered under special circumstances, such as a significant donation of land to the city of, and department of parks and recreation. So that's one, one use case. And so that could be, that doesn't exclude a living person. And then it says, or uh, in recognition of a deceased individual who contributed extraordinary service. So in that case, I, I think that's, I'm perfectly in support of, uh, in support of the clauses as written. As long as, as long as we take out the or funding part that we all sort of seem to agree on earlier. Okay. Um, so we have, we have, in, in, in front of us, the the uh, possibility of you're you are proposing leaving uh, a two drafted the way it is, or do or are you suggesting any other changes? The, the way it is minus the or funding part. Ah, okay. Um, how did how does everybody else feel about that? Anybody? It makes sense to me. I agree with Commissioner Holm. Uh, Commissioner Fields. Yeah, that's a fine correction or change to me. All right. So, so we've got we've got three people um, saying leave it as is, except for the, the deletion of or funding. Uh, Commissioner Wolick, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I, that's fine with me. I agree with that. Okay, I, I'll go along with that too. So, um, Director Kenzie, you, you have your consensus on that one. Forgot held. Thank you. I did. Did I forget you? I oh, it's not, no, it's okay. That's that's fine. I think these are examples, so I, I agree with this. This is fine. I've got to be better at checking off names here. Um, okay, well, let's move on to B then. Uh, and what, I'm sorry, just before I heard a couple of comments, and I think it's just mainly whether we, you know, place some additional words in A3. Um, I think I heard more um, a, a desire to have stronger language about um, like strongly discouraged or something along that line that I think I, I heard that um, we don't want to get in the habit of renaming existing names that the community is already familiar with. That's right. Okay. We, we, Maybe we add strongly before discouraged. Yeah, I mean, I, I can do the wordsmithing. I just want to make sure that if that's kind of um, the, the consensus that you all have to really make it very um, note, noteworthy that changing an existing name of a park is not something that we want to undertake. Um, it should be rare. Rare. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I'm rereading this number three, and I actually was kind of confused because it seemed like you were, there was something else with common community usage. I think um, whoever suggested rare, 
I missed it. <laughs> um, just renaming of parks should be rare, you know, just be simple, simplify that. Okay, thank you. I got direction on that. Okay, we, we've given you what you need on that point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, that now let's move on. Now let's move on to B. Um, so, um, who hasn't gone first here? Um, Commissioner Holm, what's your thought thoughts on B? Um, my only comment is that the last very last sentence in item one, um, substantial noteworthy public service as an elected official. I would just take off the elected official part. Okay, um, I'm, I'm curious then, uh, Director Kantian, what, uh, what was the, what was the, the thought behind um, focusing on elected officials? Um, to be honest with you, there wasn't any. It's what I read in another policy and I thought I would just throw it in there and see how you all reacted to it. So, <laughs> I, I was I that was happened to be in an, another city policy and I said well let me put it in and see how you all react okay okay um all right how, how does everybody feel about that one I agree with Commissioner Holm I think it should be any individual not just an elected official yeah I was struck by it as well I would say maybe community member or something like that instead of elected official would be my suggestion yeah, I, I I agree, and I think I don't. I'm not even sure you need that if you just take out an elected official because you'll you'll get community member, you'll get um, you know parks and rec director, you'll get you know any other kind of administrator, city employee who's dedicated a lot of time. Not not to mention our MLK park would would not qualify as a, as an elected official, but it would under as no worthy public service. We we could we could propose just uh, taking out that language and and just ending it with, and substantial and noteworthy public service period. Does that sit well with everybody? At least does it? Yes. Work? Okay. Um, so that good good comment. Okay. Um, got you. Okay, uh, Commissioner Fields, what? thoughts on anything else in B? I don't have any further comments. I think that's a good change that we just agreed to. Um, like I said, I still think we should, I have a preference for deceased, um, but I'm fine with the way number three is worded. Okay, all right. Uh, Commissioner Held. Nothing further from me. Okay, Commissioner Walnick. Um, no, no comments for me. Okay. Um, well, this is where I, I see us reaching for uh, some way of drawing that distinction between um, noteworthy, unusual, extraordinary, uh, sort of outstanding, um, and not. And I think, and I note in here that for that we have the phrase substantial or outstanding contributions in quotation marks and i'm not sure why that is there um unless we're going to make that a defined term and even if we did i i don't know why we would put in quotation marks uh, was there a reason for that Um, I think that might have been another one that I picked up from another city <laughs> so, that I thought I would, I'm, I, I'm happy. I mean, I, I think it's up to you all. I think um, I would, um, I would caution you all about trying to get too descriptive about what can constitute substantial or outstanding contribution. I, I think that um, and that's why I think it goes through and I think one of the commissioners said this earlier. It goes through a relatively, um, you know, um, rigorous process. By the time it comes to the department, they get whatever facts they need to get. It comes to the commission, 
and then it goes on to the council. And so there are some checks and balances along the way. And, and I just, obviously it's up to you all um, to, to give us the direction, but I, I get a little concerned if we're trying to really put more um, definition around that. Um, Cause otherwise, you know, what do we say after you know, 20 years of service, is that too little? Is, you know, is 15 not enough? And so that's the kind of thing that I think it's, it's difficult to try and quantify. Um, so, um, but in terms of putting quotation marks around that, again, I think that was, that was something that I picked up from one of the other cities that I was, that I was looking at. Okay. Okay. How does everybody feel about, about, that directionally, that let, let's not try to define this any more specifically than has been done here. Have we got a consensus on that? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. 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 Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm with you all. I'm, I'm changing my view on this to agree with all of you. I do have two, uh, well, before I get to me, anything else from anybody about B? No, okay. Um, just two things and, and one of them is, I think the quotation mark should be taken out. Um, but the other is in the first sentence, we say public facilities and amenities within parks may be named after selected individuals or organizations in their honor as desired and appropriate. Um, I'm not sure what that last phrase does for us and, and I'm thinking that it should be removed. Any thoughts on that? I, I agree, I think the next few sentences basically say desired and appropriate. I mean, they don't, literally say it, but that they describe what that means. That was kind of, that was kind of my feeling. And I, I think that came out of the last fall, the um, original San Mateo policy, if I remember correctly. I also think those are kind of dangerous words that might people might have a fight with um, if uh, something is, you know, said, or if it's denied, I guess, a naming is desired, denied appropriate and desired seem to be words that could be really used against the city on that one. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I think it should come out. Um, do we have, um, what, what, what are- I'm, I'm fine with that. You're okay with that? Yeah, I actually, I would even just add, like, I feel like all of number one could be parred down and just be simplified a little bit. Like it, feels a little repetitive and also in the same way that the rule or the definitions um, seem to be narrowing this also, I don't know if it's narrowing, but it's, I'm not sure it's clarifying. So maybe simpler language with the knowledge that there is a process here. You know, did this person or did this individual do something, you know, significant, substantial or outstanding contribution, I think it's fine, but we're really looking for something significant and special or extraordinary. Now I'm just giving you new words, but, but it, it should be a little bit clearer and it doesn't, I think it, it could be less wordy. Um, um, I guess my thought on that would be that we could leave that kind of massaging of the language to staff. Is that okay with everybody or do we want to get into it? I don't want to get into it, but I, I do think this is the section where we do want to kind of have a little bit of a list, some guidance um, on what, you know, what will could qualify somebody and what couldn't. I mean, I think if we take out all of the examples, then we're really opening ourselves up to a lot of people making requests that maybe aren't appropriate to use that word. <laughs> um, so I agree with you, it can be cleaned up but I, I would caution against removing all of the examples. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Everybody else? 
What's that? That makes sense. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Um, just before we leave this, is there any further discussion on B3? And that has to do with the preference for an individual to be deceased. Um, do, do we want to talk about that anymore or are we going to leave that as is? Anybody? I've said my piece on it, but I can move on. Not a, not a hill I'm going to die on, pun intended, sorry. Okay. All right, um, so so we're okay, we'll, we'll leave that one alone. Yes, we've got at least three of us on board for that. Okay, all right, so we're leaving, we're leave, we got three of us because I'm, I'm on board for that as well. Let's leave that one alone. Um, okay, section four, um, the process for naming, um, parks and facilities. Um, Commissioner Fields, why don't we start with you? Thoughts on, on uh, section four? You okay? You want me to start with someone else? No, no, it's fine. I just, I was having a mouse problem. Um, you know, this kind of mouse, not, you know, oh. a small rodent. Um, <laughs> thankfully. Um, no, I think this is the right process laid out. Um, there's probably some language wordsmithing that can make it a little bit clearer, but I think this is this is right. And knowing that there's a significant process in place, I think helps to know that it's not just, you know, I really liked, you know, my neighbor or my uncle or whoever, that there really needs to be, you know, something worthwhile that that a person or a group or a, an organization has done um, that that makes it worth, you know, worth the time of all of this. Um, and so I think that that's clear in this process. So I don't have any um, any major changes here. Okay. Um, Commissioner Commissioner Hall, thoughts on this one? No comments. Okay, uh, Commissioner Wolnick. Uh, yes, so um, the second paragraph of section A, mm -hmm. there's a sentence there, let's see, where is it? Um, the city council will review and propose the naming work condition, okay. Whether to approve or deny the name change, I think it should just say the naming um, if we're talking about something new, there wouldn't be a change there. Um, and then the last sentence of the section and see in the case where a facility is basically saying that the city will make every effort to preserve the plaque somewhere on the site. And I, I flagged it. Um, I, I don't know if that needs to be called out. I guess I'm wondering if we were you know, trying to ins or make some sort of, um, I'm blanking on the words right now, but, you know, just some assurances that, you know, if they buy a building or pay, you know, make a significant contribution and that, that it will last a long time that we'll have a plaque there. I, I guess I, I'm, I just, I want to make sure that there's flexibility when we decommission or demolish a facility that we aren't required to bend over backwards to leave the name or leave a plaque or find a spot for it. So I, I wanted to just throw that out there for discussion. Any other, anybody else's thoughts on, on that point? No. Anybody? Any? Anybody? Anybody? No, we're not. Uh, I guess maybe I should phrase it a little more specifically. Um, I, I'm not sure I'm for this, but um, just sort of removing that last sentence, I guess, is what I'm discussing. Whether we need to say that we're going to try to preserve the plaque somewhere, does that? 
does that get us anything as a city? Can I ask a question or is it that you're worried we're over committing as a city? Kind of. I mean, I know that the language is very much like, you know, we'll make every effort, but it, it does seem like a promise. And you kind of covered that in the first sentence of the paragraph anyway, right? So I don't, yeah, I, I agree. I think I would strike that, that sentence. I agree as well. Mr. Hall, wait, your thoughts on this? I don't have an opinion one way or the other. Okay, okay. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with striking it. I'm sort of thinking that um, we could do something along the lines of leave the first sentence the way it is and take out sort of the middle of the second sentence and just say, if necessary, the plaque may be relocated um, and leave the last sentence out. Thought, anybody have thoughts on that? Is that too much? Is that too much? Uh, cutting this down. I mean, I think the idea is that, um, and we're, we're sort of dodging the issue here, and, and maybe uh, Director Kenzian is, this was your, one of your points about what well, you know there are things missing and you want it, you're waiting for us to identify them. Um, but with this kind of dodging the whole issue of what happens if there's a facility named for an individual that is demolished, what happens to the name? You know, somebody somebody did something to justify the facility being named for them, and then it, it, it's knocked down. And you know, we decide the city decides to make a soccer field out of the site instead of having a, a facility there. And what happens? Um, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know whether just to flag that as a potential issue or does anybody have thoughts on that? I think we're beating it too much and we can leave it the way it is. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's one where we don't wanna to get too specific. And I, I mean, I would leave it to, to Sheila to figure out the right um, words there, but I, yeah, I don't think we need to, to wordsmith that one too much. I think that could just, break us into jail. <laughs> okay, um, but let's come back to, because uh, Commissioner Wallach made a specific proposal here, uh, and that is to strike the last sentence. What, um, how does everybody feel about that? Do we have three people for that? Okay, um, you have that one then? Okay, great. But, it, but this raises an interesting question, and this was really more for where, this not this section let me go back to the previous section i'm not sure this particular um section b4 is appropriately placed because in this section we're talking about really the what happens when a facility is demolished or decommissioned in the in the section that you were just reviewing we were only talking about the plaque not the not what happens to the facility oh. name and yeah. so i struggled whether both of those should be put together or or does this make more sense in terms of what actually happens to the facility name if a facility is is not is decommissioned or demolished versus what happens to the plaque yeah. so I, I just looking to make sure we kind of didn't I, I heard consensus on all of them but um, but then in your recent discussion I also heard about, you know, what's really is more important is what happens when a facility is actually demolished or decommissioned. So I was trying to separate those two. And if there's any sense that those two things should be together in one place, um, that may help with the organization of it.
I guess in my mind how it is makes sense. I mean, the, what to do with the plaque seems like a process um, issue to me, not a policy issue, which is where you have in B4. Um, so maybe, I mean, I still, um, I still think that um, we should strike the last sentence in, is that 4C? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't, I think it's fine to leave it separate, in my opinion. Well, that's that's fine with me as well. Do we have any uh, other thoughts? Okay, we've got some consensus on that. Do you anybody want to argue against it before we move off it? Um, but back to, and then we'll we'll leave this leave this. But that the proposal to take out the last sentence of for C, um, do we have three people who, who are for that? Yes. All right, All right. well, I, and I'll, I'll vote for that too. So that's, that's you got three for that also. Okay, section five. Um, someone wanna to volunteer to go first on this? Sure, I have no comments. Okay, all right, fair enough. Um, Commissioner Walnick? Sure, uh, okay, so most of my comments are in 5B. Um, the last sentence seems not necessary, the right to approve or deny, I think we've clearly stated that. Um, I would wonder if we wanna add just a sentence, something like, um, won't be named after products or policy, policies contrary to the department's stated mission. I'm thinking you have, you call out, you know, alcohol and cannabis, but there may be other things that really are not, um, you know, for parks and recreation that we just want to make, you know, might want to have something there on that. Does that mean we can't name it after a sofa company? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I would also, I would say I agree with um, Commissioner Wolnick's comment on um, section B. I would also say names must be tasteful and non-controversial. I feel like means nothing. Um, or rather it could mean a lot of things. Like I'm not sure it, I don't know. I, I like, it just struck me as kind of an, I, the tasteful I think is what struck me because what I, it just feels very subjective. I think non-controversial is fine. Um, so maybe it's names must be non-controversial and, and then the language Commissioner Walnick uh, suggested, you know, you know, re reflect or align with the values and, and goals of, of the department, something like that. Um, but other than that, I think this is, this is the right direction. I'd actually um, question the non-controversial statement too. I mean, I think, you know, <laughs> that's kind of hard, um, but uh, I, I, to be more specific on my other comment was, I think it should be something like um, not contrary to the mission of the department rather than something like values or, um, I, don't, I don't know if we, if you have a stated mission, <laughs> if you could reference, you know, a stated mission or something like that. But I, I agree with um, Commissioner Fields on that point of tasteful and non-controversial um, do seem like um, sparking words in our current climate, at least. Uh, other thoughts on that? I would agree. That feels more kind of like the stick. I think it's more we want the carrot in terms of what we are looking for in terms of direction on names. Uh, and I would agree too. I know we list a bunch of those areas where we don't want to, we wouldn't consider a, a name. I think there's, I can think of 10 other organizations we would not want either. So I'd figure out that one kind of catch all um, so that we don't just limit ourselves to, to the groups listed there. Or we use those, or for example, when we list the list that current names that are on there. Yeah, it seems it it seems to me that I mean I I, I agree with 
with what's said in here. And I think, I actually think saying that the city council shall have the right to approve or deny any proposed facility name serves a useful purpose in the sense that, you know, we can say the policy is that certain names will be considered and maybe we want to make some suggestion as to the kinds of names that we would want to, uh, to see. But um, reiterating there, this is up to the council and that um, no one should expect to be able to point to the policy and somehow say, well, you know, you, you've got to pick this name or you, you, or you can't pick some other name be, um, that, the, that the council somehow doesn't have the right, is, is constrained by the policy. And what we're saying is the council is not constrained by the policy. They can approve or deny any name that they want, and which, which is reflective of uh, section 1C, where we say the council has final authority to, to approve all this. We're just sort of putting it down here as well as a marker that uh, this is, that the, the council is going to decide this. Um, I don't know whether there aren't some other things that should go into uh, a collection of names that will not be considered. Um, but um, I, I, I guess I'm not I'm not sure how how we try to address that. I don't know, Dire Director Hansen, are we helping you at all with this or not? Oh, this is one that I think um, when I was doing the research in other cities. Um, this is one area, particularly this thing around fundraising and naming rights. Um, some cities have it as part of their facility naming policy. Other cities have it as a completely separate um, policy around fundraising and names related to fundraising. So um, I can go back and maybe do a little bit more due diligence. I only looked at those that were connected with the naming policy. I didn't do a lot of research on policies that were related to fundraising activities and, re and naming related to that. So I can go back and maybe try to do a little bit more, um, more research around this. It's just um, not, not really cities were not consistent at all about where they were placing this portion of a policy. It strikes me that this might be a conversation that you should have with the city attorney um, because uh, the, the, the whole idea of a fundraising campaign uh, just uh, to me, it just uh, contains an abundance of issues of which this is only one. And I think the point is about maybe this doesn't belong here um, it's maybe well taken that this this belongs in a policy about fundraising campaigns and uh, how the city is going to manage fundraising campaigns uh, of this sort. Uh, because I think, for example, we're saying an agreement between the city and major donors shall be negotiated, which outlines the terms of the donation. Uh, yes, indeed. And that's far beyond our scope. Um, so that would be my suggestion is it, uh, with respect to this entire section is that uh, it, it may be that um, we should be handing that issue over to the city attorney's office to think about or I don't know to whether or to what extent the city has a policy about this kind of thing. But no, we don't. But maybe we should. And I don't know that Parks and Rec is yeah. the department to lead that. Uh, Director Kenzie, you know what your thoughts are on that? Is this something you see as part of our our um, scope or, or or not? Well, I think again, um, this was a bit of a tough one because I heard some discussion at your last meeting around, you know, how do we, what kind of names do we want to consider if it's really around fundraising? And so 
Um, I may have taken that as some interest on the part of the commission to then actually include that as part of the policy. Um, when maybe, in fact, it should just not be here at all. And again, in looking at other cities, some have it in as part of an overall naming um, policy, some do not. They have a whole separate issue around fundraising and you know, who solicits money on behalf of the city. And if there's a foundation, you know, that they're the, they take the lead. And so um, that really gets into a whole other area that is not anticipated as part of this. What are my fellow commissioners thoughts on this? Should this whole section five be in here or not? Um, I, I definitely agree that it needs a pass by the city attorney, which it'll get anyway. But I, I think, I think parks, the parks department is, is kind of on the front of this. I mean, there's, I'm thinking of the other departments that really, you know, maybe get significant donations for things, uh, library, maybe arts, but I think there's not that many of them. So it doesn't strike me as so odd to that the parks policy would kind of include it, I guess, but, but I think you have some good points on, on um, that there's a whole lot of issues that are that this, this idea raises. Uh, other thoughts on this? I'm fine with it. You're fine with it in or out? In. Okay, we got a vote for We got a, a vote, a vote for in. I guess two vote for in really. Uh, am, am I correct? Uh, okay, we've got two votes. Yes. For, have we got two votes for in? Um, do we have a third? Yeah, I think in with a review from the city attorney is, is the right direction. I, 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 as I understand it, that's going to happen. Yes. So, and they may grab this and say, you know, no, that's ours. Uh, then we've got we've got three. I'm I'm on the I'm on the fence about it. So, but we've got three, and I think that's directional. Um, Commissioner Held, are you okay with our coming out that way? Yes, that's great. Okay. I have a another thought on this section, though. Um, so we were talking earlier about that. Um, section B, which is sort of what we won't name things after. And I'm wondering if this is the right place for that, because it does seem that it's, that's broader than just a financial um, campaign, but maybe the concern is there with the financial campaign that somebody might come in and just try to buy the name. Um, but that, as we've been talking that, I wonder if that section actually might belong somewhere else. That's, you know, just that applies to any naming we do, not just fundraising campaigns. Do we need to say that? I mean, do we need that section at all? In that the council, we, we've said in the beginning that the process, that the City Council has the final authority and that it, it, it has to pass through the department staff and, and our commission. Um, do we need to, to say in there that these names will, will not be considered? Um, especially since I imagine the council would have the power if they wanted to, to name the facility after anything that they chose. You know, if, if uh, I don't know, a cannabis company uh, offered uh, an, an enormous amount of money to build a new recreation center, um, the council could conceivably say, well, yes, there's a policy, but uh, in view of the size of the contribution, uh, we're prepared to accept it and choose the name and uh, that that's, that's within their purview as, as, our, as our elected council. Um, I don't know, that, 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 that's what's occurring to me as we talk about this, that maybe that section just doesn't belong in here. Thoughts, anybody? I 
I have thoughts, but they're all contradictory. So I'm not sure they would be very helpful. <laughs> but I do, I, I mean, we had, it seemed like we had a lot of issue with the second sentence of that. Um, so taking out the whole section would, you know, avoid the tasteful and non-controversial issue. Um, I think you're right. The city council has the discretion in the end. So, um, I, but I also think it's a policy on naming. So we're not just saying what we will and will not do. We're also providing guidance, right? So, you know, someone might, you know, there might be wiggle room in what they name it, right? Um, so maybe that will provide a little bit of direction. So, like I said, all my thoughts are contradictory. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It just seems to me we've said naming rights that promotes those one, two, three, four, five things will not be considered which suggests that anything else goes. And I don't know if we want to suggest that and saying that it will not be considered, but the city council has the right to approve or deny any name kind of contradicts itself. Um, so anyway, that, that, my, that would be my thought is um, to take out the whole thing. But if nobody else likes that idea, then I would be comfortable with um, leaving it in, but taking out tasteful and not controversial. What if um, there was a sentence that included something like what Commissioner Walnick had suggested around, um, you know, alignment with the mission of Parks and Rec, and then say, you know, something like, you know, examples. This is anyway, this is wordsmithing, but like I, I understand like not wanting to limit it to that list, but could that list be examples? Examples or you know possible possibilities outside the scope of what we're looking at or something. I mean, is there a way to make that a list that's not exclusive but an example? Uh, it's just it, like without I don't think we need to like come up with a sentence. I just I, that's the direction I would want to give to Sheila. Um, as this gets reworded and, and um, revised, um, because I, I do think I do think this list is helpful, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be exclusive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I I would be with you on that. How does everybody else feel as a direction? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Uh, the way it's written here, it says will not be considered. That's probably the strongest language we've seen anywhere in this um, this document. And so the, I, I guess I'm the only hesitation is, I mean, that came from somewhere, right? The, these these are the specific things that we just we won't consider it, you know, so I, I don't know. Are those the things? Is that the right list? Um, I guess is the question that I have. So again, this was um, this a couple of, of other cities had um, either this exact language or similar language, um, and so um, I I can certainly go back and do some more again do a little bit more wordsmithing of, around this. Um, I think the idea of having these as examples rather than here's the absolute things that we won't do. Um, but also not trying to get into a list of saying, you know, I mean, there's, I think because at that point it does start to get a little bit more subjective, you know, if um, around lots of different things. And so I think to try and um, maybe not use too many more examples, but maybe try to do it as again, not exclusive, but um, examples and see if there's a way of trying to tie it into, um, you know, consistent with the mission or, you know, um, healthy lifestyle. I don't know. I, I can do some, I could do some wordsmithing and bring some examples back to you the next time. Well, that, that would work for me. Um, I, I personally think this falls under the category of this is going to be reviewed by multiple people when it comes up and we don't need to do anything else with the language. 
Yeah, I, 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 I'd be happy with going in the direction that, uh, that Sheila has, has laid out. Does that work? Yes, yes, okay. All right. Um, so now we're up to uh, the, the last section here about uh, non-facility non naming opportunities. Uh, any comments on that one? Okay. Yeah, I, I just wondered if we wanted to reiterate the language about who pays for the plaque in this section you can just kind of copy and paste um, responsibility for the purchase shall be borne by the requesting party unless otherwise negotiated with the city, something like that. Um, oh, I see. Instead of saying when, rec when initiated by the city, the city shall pay. Right. Okay. How does everybody else feel about that? All right, I'm, I'm for it also. Okay, any other comments on this? Commissioner Hell, no? No, no. Um, Eric, anything from you on this? No. Okay, me either. So I, th okay. I think we're done. And you know, the question that, that the chair is always supposed to ask in situations like this, to the to the director and that is uh have we given you the help that you were looking for uh when you asked us to take a look at this yes okay and then qualified yes <laughs> okay good okay good um then i would say we're done with that agenda item we move on to um, announcements and and um, communications so um, a couple things. I think all of you should have gotten the invitation or the announcement about this coming Saturday. Uh, Winter Wonderland will be in Central Park from four to eight. Um, so we have lots of um, exciting things that are scheduled. Um, we think, uh, well, we don't think, we know the weather is gonna be nice. And so um, we're actually anticipating, um, you know, large crowds of people. People are really flocking to outdoor events right now rather than indoor events. And so um, the one thing that we have included, and I don't know whether or not it was in the invitation, but um, the, one, the one event that we are missing this year is our annual holiday festival of dance. That was one that we chose not to do um, simply because of it being completely indoors. Um, and so in lieu of not having a holiday festival of dance, we're actually taking a number of the children's dance classes that have been meeting during the fall, and they will be doing performances on the backside of the central stage. Um, so it's, it's not obviously your full on holiday festival of dance, but it does give some of the classes an opportunity to perform um, after this uh, fall session. So those will be held at different times uh, across the evening as well. Okay, good. Um, other than that, uh, December is um, generally um, a busy month for staff, um, particularly staff at Martin Luther King Center where they're co-hosting a lot of events with the Police Activities League. And so there are lots of events going on um, out at King Center um, particularly those that are um, co-hosted with our, our Police Activities League program. Um, other than that, I think you've hopefully all seen the ice rink is back in operation. Um, yeah. He loves, Pete Mott, who is the operator, loves good weather, um, with the exception that in the middle of the day, these last couple of weeks, the weather has been so warm that it tends to melt the ice. Um, and so if you go at 2.30 or 3 in the afternoon, you're going to get about a half inch of water <laughs> on the ice surface. Um, but uh, it's just, it's absolutely great to see um, so many people back out. And I think he had gotten at least four or five sponsors to sponsor free skate days. And so today was one of those days that um, there's actually a sponsor that um, pays whatever the sponsorship rate is. And then every kid who comes on this day gets to, or every, everybody, not just children, but everybody gets to skate for free. Okay. Um, and so he has, I believe four, maybe five of those um, throughout the entire season. Um, so that's, it's great to see that back in operation. Wonderful, wonderful. 
Uh, does anybody else have anything? Okay. Well, if I can, I'm sorry, Chris, if I can just make, of course. Uh, if I can just make one further comment sure. um, on the um, crystal ball this time, I tried to indicate not necessarily by month, but the major items that I'm hoping to try and get accomplished through the end of May. Um, I don't know when they're gonna be scheduled. Some of those are within my control, some of them are not. And so something like the discussion that we had um, earlier this year about um, the whole in lieu fees, um, that's being handled right now by somebody from our community development department in trying to work with a consultant on that. So. Um, I know it's one that it would be helpful to try and get that um, tied up, but some of those are not within my control. And so um, I think from here on out, I'm going to continue to um, cross those off the list when we bring them to you, um, rather than trying to schedule certain things by months, because I'm just not sure that I'm going to be able to predict that well uh, between now and the end of May. Okay. Okay. Any, anybody else have anything? Okay, well then. I, When's, uh, was the was the email you sent out, Sheila, is that like a official public announcement? Uh, yes. Well, okay, because I, I was late to the start of the meeting, so I didn't officially say congratulations and, and you're gonna be missed. Thank you. As I said earlier, I'm not ready to take my parade lap yet. So we still have a lot, we still have a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm sure we, we all join you in, in hoping that we can get uh, as much of, and hopefully all of, all of the above uh, completed in the, the, the five months that we've got, still got before. So uh, we, we'll, we'll do everything we can to make, to try to help you make all this happen. Well, and, and myself and staff will continue to work on our end as well. So um, anyway, um, hope to see most of you out at Central Park, maybe on Saturday um, for Winter Wonderland. Um, and if I don't see you, um, you know, best wishes for a great holiday season during the month of December. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, we'll look forward to then to, I, I assume we should figure that we're going to be meeting every month then between now and, and May, sounds like. Um, that's probably a relatively good assumption. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, then um, best wishes to everybody for, uh, for next year and have a wonderful holiday season. And uh, We'll, we'll, we'll see you all after after New Year's. Holiday Thank break. you. Thanks, Bye everybody. Guys. All right, we're we're officially adjourned. <laughs>